Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's stream. Now, this is a bit of an odd one. So I'm doing, I'm trying something new, and it's called the Go Show. So I'm just going to flip up a couple of slides here so that you can all see. So it's great to have you on. I see that the numbers are climbing. I hope everyone's having a good day. I mean, I certainly am. I think I saw the uh, the new Mercedes AMG F1 team uh, present the new car today, and it looks good. So if you're into F1, throw it in the chat, and uh, let's get talking, because it's going to be more of a lunch and learn and less of a lecture, more of a show and tell. So let me just grab open the comments. Just pop in the uh, chat where you're coming from or where you're viewing this from. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, something going. So like I said, welcome. This is going to be a short one today. Uh, usually I have like an hour stream, but what I'm trying to do is some shorter lunch and learns. So today I've put it in for 45 minutes, but I can tell you it probably isn't going to take 45 minutes. It'll probably take about half an hour. So give you some, give you some time back at the end, hopefully. So let's get started. Let's just jump into it, shall we? Because I don't want to waste any time. So like every single stream, we have a code of conduct. This is a reactor stream after all. So just please be aware of others. Please be kind. Please be respectful. The chat is completely open for questions. Just please ask some nice ones. And yeah, we're all here to learn. It's a learning environment. So have some fun. So who am I? I'm a Microsoft Regional Cloud Advocate. My name's Liam Hampton. I'm an All Zero Ambassador, Dev Network Advisory Board member. I write a lot of Go code, hence today's stream. Uh, and I like to travel the world. So that's just a little bit about me. I usually have two learning goals, but for this one, I'm only gonna have one. And I just want you to take away one thing today. And I want you to understand and learn how to manipulate JSON in Go. So I recognize this is widely used as a structure, and we can talk a little bit about it in a moment. So actually, I'm not going to I'm not going to do any further. I'm just going to talk about this now. I'm just going to jump straight into it. So what is JSON? JSON is JavaScript object notation. And what it is, it is essentially a lightweight data interchange, which means that it allows other microservices or, or communications between technologies to happen at a standard interface level, which is good, which is actually well, it's, it's what you want, right? Uh, the other ones is XML, but JSON is the most common one. If you want speed, it is very much less verbose than XML. It has got a lesser set of um, what you call it, reserved words or reserved characters, should we say. So I think you have uh, curly braces, you've got square braces, you've got sort of uh, double quotes, commas, and uh, colons. Colon is it colons? Semicolons, one of them. Um, and that just allows you to... Well, having a smaller dictionary of those is, is better, right? It just means that you have a little bit more flexibility with what it is that you want to write. Whereas XML, on the other hand, stands for extensive markdown language. And that is a little bit more complex. So that's used for more complex data structures. It's used for more complex data transmissions. It's a little bit more heavier than JSON. It, it just it encapsulates a lot more, takes a bit more space and data through uh, data transmission. It's got a wide range of features and tools or a better, wider range of features and tools than JSON when it comes to validation and transformation. But again, we're not going to talk about that one. Um, and I would typically use it for web scraping. So I've created a web scraper before and I went through the XML route, which was better. It gave me a little bit more uh, control over what it is I was doing and why I was doing it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little overview of what JSON is and what XML is. Now, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. I'm all ears. I'd love to get a conversation going. So please do throw where you're listening from in the chat, whether you're on LinkedIn or whether you're looking, watching on Twitter or whether you're on YouTube, just throw it in there. I will pick it up as well. I think I have got my notifications open for LinkedIn and Twitter as well. So I will try and get back to you during the stream. Uh, I can kind of see the, the numbers slowly rising. So we could probably hold on for a minute. Um, Otherwise, what should we? There's no nobody speaking in the chat. Come on, tell me where you're listening from. Right, tell you what, we're going to get into it. So I'm going to stop presenting uh, with these slides. I'm going to bring this one down, and I'm just going to get straight into the code. So give us just one moment while I set this one up, and let me share my screen. Uh, let's get the four. This one. So hopefully, ooh, where's my cursor gone? I don't know which one I've shared then. Hold on just one moment. There we go. 
There we go. We have got a empty canvas. So we're going to go through a number of different um, functions or different ways that we can manipulate JSON in Go. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at encoding JSON. We're going to look at decoding JSON. We're going to look at decoding into a map, encoding a slice of structs, because, uh, well, that's just a common use case. Encoding JSON with indent. So indenting is really important in JSON for readability purposes. And sometimes when you get, or when you're working with JSON in Go, it's not the easiest to manipulate. It's not the easiest to understand or read. So if we add indentations where we've got an actual function which allows us to do so, we can read it a little bit easier. We're going to look at decoding into a slice. And finally, finally, if we get time, I'm going to try and show you how to encode a struct with the omit empty. So what I mean by that is when we're trying to map some of the data values to a struct and try and print it, I'm going to leave one empty. I'm not going to put one in and see how Go handles that. So there's a, there's a number of ways it can play with it, but I'm going to show you what happens at the end. So hopefully you can all see my screen. Now I have actually got a smaller window on my right hand side. So if you see me looking around, I've just got different screens going all over the place. So let me just, hopefully you can see that. Uh, if you can't, throw it in the chat and I will make it bigger, but um, I'll leave it as is for now. So what I've done, I have opened up a an empty file and I'm just calling this main.go and I'm gonna give it the package of main, like I always do. And this is how you should always start your Go program. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put in some imports. Now I can either write these imports or I can let uh, Copilot do it. And that's the thing that I'm gonna use that I'm going to hopefully have Copilot help me out with some of this code. Uh, or I can just use the Go Marketplace plugin, which will help do my uh, imports for me. So let's just go ahead and try and import something and let's just see what it, oh, it already knows I'm gonna be talking about JSON because of the name of the file. So encoding slash JSON is an internal package used in Go. And this allows us to call functions like JSON Marshall, JSON Unmarshall, uh, JSON Marshall with indents, etc. So let's leave it at that and see what, and it wants me to have the print line. Of course it does. It wants me to have log, but I'm not gonna bother with that one. So I'm just gonna close it off there. And what happens if I save, it is going to, it's just going to get rid of those imports because I'm not using them. That's part of the plugin. So we start again. So let's actually start by writing some code. So let's have a type. And this type is going to be a person and it's gonna be a struct. And for every person, I'm going to give them a name and an age. So let's say name is string. And this is optional, this part. This is the JSON tag at the end of each uh, index here. Now, what that really means is that I this is what I want to call it in my JSON at the output or the input. I'm just gonna give it a lowercase n, so it's name, okay? And like I said, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. This is just gives you a bit more control over your JSON objects when playing with them in Go. And I want to give them an age. And this is Copilot actually writing this for me, by the way. Um, this is actually what I, this is what I want to write, but it is one step ahead of me. Uh, Copilot, give it a go, it is so cool. It works amazingly. Uh, so I'm also going to give a person an age, and that's going to be an integer. So you can see that I'm giving uh, each value a type or a data type, and I'm giving it a JSON tag. And that's all. I mean, I could go on and give them more. I could give them an occupation. I could give them a location, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say name and age. Now, it hasn't imported anything for me yet because I haven't called upon any packages. So now I want to call my main function. So what I do is type out me. I'm just going to write this because it's a bit more fun when I write it. I don't like tabbing all the time. Um, and I could start manipulating person inside this function. But because I'm going to be calling many functions, I actually want to create external functions from my main. So instead of tabbing this and saying, you know, P is person, uh, name John, age 30, I am going to say uh, encode JSON. And I'm just going to give it a function. And what this is going to do is it's going to convert a data structure to JSON. So I have the data structure of person and I want to take it to be a JSON object. So let's go and create this function and let's call it uh, encode JSON. And yeah, I can tab that. So I can say person, uh, P is person. Uh, actually, I want to call that person, not uh, P. And give them a name, John, and give them an age of 30. Uh, or let's say 32, I don't like 30, it's too much of a round number for me. 
now I want to encode the struct. So I'm going to uh, say JSON data and say error. So this is just going to return error if this fails, by the way, because JSON Marshall will return uh, a value and an error. So I need to assign it multiple values. If uh, you don't understand how this is working, because I'm not going to be teaching you how to write Go in these sort of Go time, uh, sort of Go time, but the Go show sessions, um, I am going to be sort of helping you understand different um, different parts of it and how it really comes together. So uh, if you don't know what this is, please do go back and watch Learn Go with Liam because I go through a whole bunch of these uh, fundamental parts uh, of sort of multiple values, multiple return values, uh, function signatures, et cetera. So but for this one, I'm just going to JSON data, I'm going to give it an error and I'm going to say equals and it already knows what I want to do, JSON Marshall person. Now that is simply just going to take it and um, sort of marshal it into or encode it into a JSON object. So if we hover over json.marshal, um, I need to import that first. And if I click save, it will import it for me. And it's just complaining because I'm not using them. But what this is doing here is if I read the pop-up, I'm not sure if you can see this on the stream, but uh, hopefully you can, it returns uh, anything or uh, and a byte and an error at the end. So I give it anything. Um, which is a person in this instance, and it will return a byte or a byte slice or an error, which is what JSON data is and error is at the beginning. So it's what these two are here. So now I'm just going to do my error checking. So if error is nil, then I don't want to panic. I just want to um, print line. I don't need to panic. That's a bit too extreme for what we have here. Um, using panics and error checking and things like that in Go is, is wildly up to you. In some cases, there are some standards, but it seems everybody has their own way of doing it. Uh, I just like to print the error and return at this point. So I can probably close that one off and yes, that's fine. So now what I want to do is I want to use JSON data. And to do that, I'm just going to print line um, string of JSON data. And the reason I'm doing it as a string is because otherwise you get like a whole bunch of squiggly um, message rather than the actual string of the data itself. So to make it a little bit easier for me, I'm going to also give it a print line and I'm going to tell it that uh, this is encoding JSON because we can have multiple functions. So let's just say um, encode JSON, uh, which leave it at that. Cool, so now if I was to run this, Hopefully, we should see an output of John is age 32. And that's going to be encoding JSON. So this is one of the most common ways that you're going to be handling JSON. Now, the second one is decoding JSON. So you have encoding and decoding. Now, as you can imagine, decoding is the complete opposite. Decoding is when you're converting JSON to a data structure in Go. And Copilot can already sense that I'm going to be doing a decode uh, as the next one. So let's just, oh, I don't want to decode, decode uh, JSON. So that's going to be the next function that we're going to write. So this one is a little bit more tricky because it entails you actually using pointers and creating your own byte slice. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's see what, um, let's see what Copilot is going to to hand me and see if I'd write this any differently. So I would typically write, so let's just get rid of that so I can actually talk it through. So I would typically have uh, a JSON string. So I just, in this instance, I'd say JSON data is like a byte, um, a byte slice of strings, uh, which is, you know, giving it a sort of something to play with. I would then typically uh, assign maybe like a struct, and then I would unmarshal the data into the struct using a pointer which references the actual struct of person itself. And then I print it out. So that's typically how I would do it. And and let's just see exactly how Copilot would write it. And as you can see, it's given pretty much the exact same uh, thing as before, but I wasn't reading off that. So it said, it said JSON data. So it's given it a byte, uh, byte slice with a string inside. So you can always tell it's a string because it's got like the back ticks and it's all kind of escaped uh, at that point. Uh, it's saying variable person is person and it's unmarshalling JSON data into person. So it's, it is actually exactly what I would expect it to be doing. And it is exactly what I would be doing uh, myself if I were to write this. So I'm going to tab that and I'm just going to, uh, it's actually done it itself. It's actually given me the print line for decode JSON as well. So let's walk through this line, what it's actually doing. So we're assigning JSON data to this byte slice and it is a string name, John, 
age 32. Okay, so I've given it a bit of data, a bit of JSON data. Um, you would typically get this if it's coming in maybe from an API or as a value, but this time I'm just making it myself for purpose of this tutorial. And then sending a variable of person, <clears throat> so excuse me, person. And that is going to be assigned to the struct type of person, as we can see here. Oh, so we've got name, string, uh, JSON, name, and age, sorry. Name and age of the person, basically, is what I made at the top. And what I'm going to be doing is taking this JSON data and I'm going to be putting it into or decoding it into person struct. So unmarshal is the function we're going to be using. So the encoding is marshal, decoding is unmarshal. And what it's going to be doing is going to be taking uh, any of these in. So it's going to take a data, which is going to be our byte slice and uh, of type byte. And it's going to also take a pointer. So we can say any at this point, but I'm going to give it a pointer to the struct that I want to send it to. And it's going to be of person. So we have to use this ampersand. Now, again, I've kind of alluded to this and explained it in uh, memory. I think it was Learn Go with Liam episode four, which was last month. Uh, so please go back and have a read of that if you don't understand how pointers are working and how memory management works in Go. Uh, this is actually a really fundamental part. Uh, if I wasn't, if I didn't have that, Ampersand, it would throw an error saying it's not of the correct type because it's expecting an actual memory address to be manipulating. So I actually want to change the values um, of person at this point. And then again, I'm just going to be doing some error checking and then I'm going to print it out at the end. So if all goes well, this should run. I haven't got any compilation errors so far, um, but we'll find out when I run it. And we can see we're building it up now, it's building up a little bit better. So Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start introducing some new lines to make this a little bit easier for people to read in the console. So let's uh, clear this one down here for you and run that one again. Okay, cool. So we have got uh, age 32 and it's John and 32. So we've, we've got them in there. Okay. So we've decoded that JSON from this string to an output of JSON down here. So that is the second way that you can manipulate some JSON data. Now, some other really interesting or common occurrences which we find with JSON is decoding into maps. Okay, so I've already done an encode JSON, a decode JSON, and we're going to decode into a map. I realized I just said encode, I meant decode into a map. So let's go and build out that function. So we're gonna to go to our main and let's type in uh, decode uh, into map. It kind of already, it's very scary how it knows pretty much what I'm going to be writing. Um, I, I don't know if that's taken it from a previous file. Maybe it's the common occurrence. Maybe it just kind of knows, hey, that's open API, open API for you. Uh, great tool, Copilot. Loving it so far. So let's write this one. So let's write a function, uh, decode into a map. Again, it's going to give me pretty much uh, all the same code again. Um, so let's go through it. So I would be typically writing this um, out myself, but in the interest of time, because it's already 20 past 12 and I really don't want to be keeping you too long in your lunch break, uh, we will uh, be skipping through this and, and going through it at some speed. So this is all recorded, by the way, This you can always reference this straight back um, on YouTube. Uh, so it's always going to be available for you. And hopefully you can reference this in, uh, in your own, own code as well. So what do you do when you decode into a map? Now, this is an interesting one because now we're using an interface. Now, an interface, again, I cover that in Lungo with Liam, uh, but it's, basically, it's essentially a type. And we are going to be building a map of the interface itself. So JSON data is a byte slice of John, age 32. And let's just change this up a little bit. Let's just say, uh, Liam and age 55. I'm not 55, by the way, um, but for the argument's sake, let's just pop that one in here. And I think I missed out. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to say, right, variable data. And I'm going to say it's of a map of strings. Now, that map of strings is a type interface. Now, this just allows me to. Um, the interface type is used to represent values of any type at this point. Okay, this is useful when I don't know what type of JSON data is gonna be coming for it. So I'm just going to give it um, the interface type. I'm then going to unmarshal JSON data 
and again, wrap it into data, which is not person this time. It is the map of strings, which is of type interface. This is getting quite complicated quite quickly. Um, and I promise this is as complicated as it gets. And you can refer, always refer back to this one. This one always trips me up, um, but it's always a good one to know. So when you're building maps, when you want uh, special key values or unique keys and unique values, this is a really good way to um, sort of map out your JSON data. So again, check for an error, and then I'm going to print it out. And it's, look at that, it's already given me the new line as well. So if we were to run this one, we would get, um, oh, I invalid character. What did I do? I did something to here. So let's just go back. Yeah, there we go. Liam, oh, I didn't even need the things, did I? Yep, there we go. So let's move this one out of the way because you can't see that one anyway. Uh, and what we've got down here, we've got a map, age 55, name Liam. So we're getting exactly what we want at this point. Hopefully everybody's following so far. Okay, this has got pretty, pretty complicated pretty quickly. Um, but essentially what we've done is we have taken some, a string or a byte, some a data structure, should we say that's the correct word? And we have put it into a map of, of, of data, basically. That's what we've done. We have unmarshaled it into a map. So the next one that we're going to build. So we've done encode JSON, decode JSON, and decode into a map. We are going to encode a slice of structs. So this is another one that we commonly come across. So encode uh, slice of uh, structs. Again, it's probably going to build it for me. And let's run through the code. Code slice of structs. Cool. And it's giving me maybe a different one that I was expecting. Maybe is that the right one? Encoding slice of structs. Let's just, I want to call it encoding slice of structs. And let's see if this is going to give me a better output than I wanted. You know what, let's go with it. Let's rock with this. Uh, so persons. Okay, so what have we got here? So we've got two people. We've got Liam and John. So Liam's age 55, hello. And we have John, age 32, much younger than me. That's, I'm, I'm not 55. Then what it's doing is it's saying JSON data and error. Again, we're mapping those two variables to this function because it returns two values. It's a multiple return uh, function call. And we're going to marshal. So we are encoding this time. We're marshaling, not unmarshaling because we're not decoding. We're encoding. So we are marshaling. And what we're going to do is we're going to marshal persons. Now, I, I mean, grammatically, you'd say people, but I'm going to say persons, multiple people uh, of type person, which is a struct, which has got a name and an age. So name, John, um, age 32, name, Liam, age 55. And then I'm going to be checking for some errors. You can see this is pretty standard now across the board. The only real thing that matters is that initial sort of function call, whether it's encoding uh, or decoding with Marshall and unmarshal and the kind of data that you're going to be handing to it. It's just syntactically correct this way. Um, and this is just kind of the bulk of working with JSON. It's just that, that very top part. So hopefully we should get John and Liam as an output. And again, it's given me a new line and it is printing out the string of that. So let's clear again and let's see what we get uh, for this one. And ooh, it's given me an error. Why is it giving me an error? Expected expecting name or bracket. What have I done here? Oh, let's work through this one. Um, let's just say, I don't like pe persons anyway. So let's say this is people. And let's move this one to there. What does it want? That's odd. Anybody in the, anybody in the chat? What have I missed? I'm not getting any errors besides that one. I tell you what, I don't know what that was complaining at, but hey, it worked second time. They say insanity is trying the same thing twice and well, I just did it and it works. <laughs> All I did was change people. Maybe I called something people at the top. 
Um, never mind. It worked. So in our output encoding slice of structs, we have got a slice and we have got, so the slices are down here and we've got name. So we've got John and Liam basically in there. So that works. So that's another really common use case for uh, working with JSON data and manipulating it. So the next one that we're going to do is encoding uh, JSON with indents. Now this is actually a really useful one to know because JSON, you're all used to seeing it with some lovely indenting. As you can see here, the formatting is pretty darn, pretty darn poor. Uh, not really what I want. So I want to indent it. I want to make it look pretty. I want to make it look good. So let's quickly do that one, shall we? And then we're only a couple of minutes away. So let's speed through this one. Uh, encoding ooh, JSON, let's call it. With an indent. So now I can copy and paste that function. So I don't make any typos. And I don't even need to because it's going to do it itself. And what have we got here? So we have a person. Uh, it's named person. It's John, H32 again. JSON data, we're going to be marshalling, but with an indent. So it's a different function call this time. So JSON dot has got multiple. Um, so let's see if we can print this out. So we've got multiple different sort of methods that we can use on it. Marshall, Marshall indent, Marshall herb new decoder, et cetera. Don't need to worry about those. Um, but yeah, and what this is doing, so the first one is the data that we're going to pass in. The second one is a prefix. And the third one is the indent. So what have we got here? We've got maybe like a one space indent. Let's make that two space indent. And then we're going to print it out. Check for an error and print it. And as we can see here, we have got a cool little indented JSON object. So I don't know, let's make this. There you go. Let's see how let's see how that actually works. Oh, let's see what pumps out. As you can see here, we got a much bigger indent. Okay, that's all you're doing. Pretty simple, pretty good. The final one before we get onto the emitting, which is sending through empty bits of data, um, is going to be decode into a slice. Uh, into slice. This is another really common. Use case. So what I've basically done for this is I've taken the most common use cases of playing with JSON, the, the most encounters that I've personally had as well, and to help try and demystify them, help you work through them, give you some examples. So decode into a slice. What is that going to do? So let's walk through it, shall we? And again, it's going to give me all the data I need for it. Um, uh, I mean, this is just, I'm not being lazy. It's speed and efficiency. That's what it is, people. Um, so decoding into a slice. This is going to be, this is a fun one. I like this one. So what have we got? We have got, let's just move this out of the way. Let's make this a little bit easier to read. We've got JSON data is a byte slice. So what does that mean? We're going to be unmarshalling because we're giving it the JSON. Um, again, same people, John and Liam, but this time we're going to say people is of type person. So we're giving it a struct, which means we're going to be using pointers at some point here. Uh, and we're going to say, you know what? JSON.unmarshal, going to give it some data, which is JSON data, going to give it the pointer, which goes to people. So we're saying uh, this data is going to be populating this struct. So use a pointer to hit the exact memory address and the values of the, of the struct people. Uh, check for an error. And then that's it. That's all you need to do. It basically handles everything for you. Um, so uh, what, what else should we do? We could have multiple people in this and maybe I could loop through, uh, loop through the slice, maybe. Should we loop, let's loop through a slice. So let's let's write a loop. Um, actually, let's, let's print it, see what it looks like first. And then we can, I mean, that doesn't look very pretty. Um, so let's just see, let's see if we can get like multiple print values uh, out of that one. Uh, let's move that one out of the way. And let's do a loop. So um, let's do it after the print line. So for, uh, let's say underscore, okay, it's already given me half of my range loop that I wanted anyway. Uh, but let's say person is equal to a uh, range. And that's going to say people. And let's just print out that one. Uh, we could probably print out a better string. I, I don't like that, just printing just a plain value. I like to have a little bit more control over it. So let's say name, uh, colon, uh, let's say 
NHS, uh, new line, and then let's say uh, age, yeah, let's say age, uh, give it uh, percent ID, uh, new line, and I think that should be it. I think we just need to do person name and then person uh, age, I think at that point. So comma, uh, person age, yeah, cool. That looks a little bit better to me. Let me know what you think in the chat. Do you do this one as well? Uh, I certainly do. I like to have a little bit more control. So what is it going to come out with? Hopefully it shows a better output. Yeah, cool. So let's remove that final print line, clear that one again, and we can see a better output at the end. Cool. So we got John, H32, and Liam, H55. So that just looks a little bit better in my opinion. And this is just a really easy way to be playing with uh, different slices, data, looping over them using a range loop. Again, this is something I can sort of play with and show you more of in later streams if that's what you're interested in. Now onto the final one, because I realized we're almost at the end of the, well, we are actually 32 minutes in, but uh, I did I did tell you I'd give, give you some time back at the end. Let's just say um, encode uh, struct uh, with omit empty. Let's do this one. And I realize that's probably not capitalized properly, but fine. So what does this mean? This just means that we're going to be leaving something blank. Now there's many ways we could do this. So as you can see, Copilot has given me a pretty verbose way of doing it. We're gonna go with it and see what it does. But you can see that we have got this JSON tag omit empty, which I believe is just going to leave it empty even if you have it in there. Now, the other way of doing this is just completely uh, blatting age from this struct and just saying, you know what, I'm not gonna have anything in there, um, but we can we can go with it. In fact, I don't even need to create a new struct. I don't know why it's created a new struct for me. Let's, uh, let's remove that one. I'm going to do this probably a different way. So let's say a uh, person is equal to name. Okay, let's do this because I actually don't want to use the other struct. I could have that tag in there and have it on there, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use the original one, which has got a name and an age. And I'm going to say just name of John. And that's it. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to give him an age and I'm going to marshal it. And it should, should print out just John. It shouldn't error because when you're emitting a value like this, it just uh, zeros out. Okay. Uh, what it does it is just a zero value and then it's just blanked. So we can go ahead and run this one. Except so this isn't that Difficult is just simply missing out a value. And of course, it's just going to give a age of zero. That's what it does. It zero values it, which is pretty cool, which, okay, it's pretty cool. But then obviously you need to account for that if there's going to be throwing errors at that point. So that is JSON in half an hour in Go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all of this into, Git. in fact, it's already in GitHub. Now I'm going to send you a link in the chat and it is aka.ms forward slash the go show gh and what that is is a link to the github repository with all the code in it's under ep1 so episode one and you can get all of this um all of this code and it is going to be uh, commented for you it's already it should already be commented or commenting i'll put it up there make sure it is um that that is one of the important parts so let me just remove that one and stop sharing my screen because I do have a question for you all, for you lovely people. I would really, really like some feedback, not feedback, a submission form for you to fill out. So let me just throw up this one on the screen. I'm not gonna go into slides or anything. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Uh, let me do that one. Cool, so this is the content submission form. And I, if you really wanna see some more stuff on here, so maybe you want me to start building web servers, whether you want me to um, build out some more strings, some different um, strings. So obviously you've got print line, you've got print F, you've got print sprint, I think, sprint F. So you, many different ways that you can manipulate strings in Go, very much like you can in JavaScript and other languages. Maybe you want some third-party import packages. Maybe you want, all of these goodness, I'm going to be running this show every two weeks on a Wednesday at lunchtime, 12 p.m. Okay, so come along for the Go Show. 
and it's just going to be run by you. Hopefully, it just gets these bite-sized bits of code, show and tell, talk about languages, talk about what's going on, uh, and we go from there. So please do throw in a submission form. Now, I'm also going to throw in a link to that one in the chat in a second. I believe it is aka.ms forward slash um, the go show content. So let me just make sure that link actually works before I plug that into, <laughs> into the chat. I don't want people to be, yep, that is the right one. There we go, we got aka.ms forward slash the go show content. And I have also got a cloud skill challenge, which I would love for you to take part in if you would like to learn a bit more Go. Now, really awesome way to upskill. Uh, learn modules on there are absolutely fantastic. They're up to date. Now, I know that I did use Go 1.19 today, and I know 1.20 is out as well, uh, but I'm just sticking with what, uh, what works for this demo, making sure nothing changed. Uh, and of course, you can do the same thing with the Cloud Skill Challenge. Uh, the latest language is applicable. It is a fantastic learn module. It is great for you to go through. It says it's like five hours or something uh, of learning. Depends how fast you read, basically. Um, but it's a really good way to get hands on, understand the language, understand what you're doing. And um, if you have any questions, then please do reach out. I'll be happy uh, to answer any questions you have uh, on social media. So jump out onto Twitter. My handle is uh, down here, Liam C. Hampton. Um, so yeah, please do reach out, ask any questions always happy to help. And the Cloud Skills Challenge is aka.ms forward slash Liam. Pretty easy one for you to remember that one. And that's also going to be uh, active until I think the 28th of February. And then I may or may not start another one for you, which, you know, we'll try. We'll see what we're doing. Uh, besides that, uh, upcoming next, I've got an event for Go, a three hour live stream happening from the Microsoft Studios in on the 23rd of March next month, which is going to be amazing. I'm going to be with somebody in the community and we're going to be delivering a three hour stream, which will deploy a end to end application from front end server to database and show you how to write the code connecting it all up in Azure, which is going to be absolutely brilliant. So come along to that one if you're interested. And the link for that one is aka.ms forward slash tech days. And again, I will post that one into the chat as well. And if you're watching on Twitter or LinkedIn, then the chat is on YouTube. So head over to the YouTube stream. You'll be able to see them there uh, as well. All righty. Well, I think that concludes. If we've got any questions, now is your time to post them in the chat because we're within the 45 minutes and I can give you some time back if you like. I'm going to take the silence in the chat as no, no questions. Hopefully you enjoyed it and have a great day. It's been great to be streaming and um, I look forward to seeing you two weeks time on the Go Show. Bye all.